In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for His infinite love, mercy, and everlasting kindness. To be once again in His holy presence, in His holy church, and sharing His life, His living and life-giving Word, the only truth, which is the Holy Bible, the Word of the true divine God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and revealed in fullness through Jesus Christ of Nazareth when he became man over 2,000 years ago. We thank the Lord for everyone who is present in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming. May the almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth bless you all, guide you and protect you and deliver you from the snares of the enemy. Amen. If I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Psalm number 117. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Lord Him, all you peoples. For His merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. And all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. There are empty seats here at the very front, at the very front, empty seats. Well, a very good evening to everyone. How are we? Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Oh, there was that angelic voice. Good. Well, we thank the Lord. Um, first, my sincere apologies. Um, actually, let's leave that uh, later. Let's listen to this beautiful hymn by our beautiful English choir, and then we will come back to our topic. God bless. Amen. What a powerful na the name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. Absolutely. Yeshua, Yeshua, Yesus. Uh, but the original name is Hebrew, Yeshua. Or in Aramaic, Syriac, we, we call him Yeshua. Yeshua, Yeshua. See Hebrew, Aramaic, Syriac, they're all Semitic languages, Arabic as well. So they are one family. So it's very similar, very close. Well, how are we? Do I have to keep on repeating the same thing over and over? How are we? Yalla, Habib Albe, come on. Do I have to make you tabula and baba ganoush to make your voices louder? Or maybe lasagna, italiano. Oh, bellissimo. Come stas? Very, very, We thank the Lord. Uh, first of all, we'd like to apologize for last Fridays. Um, there was no Bible preach. I was told uh, there was still about half the church was filled with people. So this is the, the, the way we're going to address this. If you have not subscribed to the uh, church channels, please do so. Because if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, Christ the Good Shepherd Church. Christ the Good Shepherd Church. Subscribe to it. So every time there is a notification, there is something uh, uploaded on there, you will get a notification. So you don't have to travel. I felt extremely bad. There were some people that came from afar. I'm not sure, I can't remember if there was an overseas or an interstate people. So my sincerest, sincerest, sincerest apologies to all of those who came. But 
Father Daniel did a good job and uh, he, he gave a small sermon to them and it was absolutely wonderful. So, but I do apologize about last Fridays, but please do subscribe. So that way you get the notifications every time we upload something on the church YouTube channel. Okay, um, it's been a long time. I'm a bit rough around the edges. So we always start with a Q&A just to get the uh, battery recharged again. And we're going to go back to the book of Revelation. It's been a long time. Yeah? This book of Revelation doesn't want to end. Yes, we are still living the book of Revelation. I think, uh, I believe we are up to chapter 18 in the book of Revelation. But today it's going to be Q&A. Uh, and I'll try, we will try to answer as many questions as possible. Um, and I hope they're not going to be uh, very controversial questions where you put this poor little bishop in a very uncomfortable situation. All right. Um, so what shall we do? I might start from here first. Please explain to me using scripture about praying for the departed between brackets dead. That would be praying for salvation after bodily death. Uh, I would encourage you, my dear friend, and thank you for the question. I'd encourage you to visit the church YouTube channel, Christ the Good Shepherd Church YouTube channel, and just type in Intercession of Saints by Bishop Murray. Intercession of Saints by Bishop Murray. We've done a full lecture on intercession of saints, the departed souls, as you put it. So refer to, the, uh, to that lesson. Is purgatory real? I don't know. For years I've been told that purgatory is real, but I've come across some people who have said it's not, and that when we pass on, Jesus will judge us then. Could you please clear this up? All I can say in a nutshell, my beloved, and thank you for your question, purgatory is, um, um, is, a, is, a, is a, a law, a canon law, or, or maybe even a, a dogma in the Catholic Church only. It, the Orthodox world and the Protestants do not believe in purgatory. And when I say orthodoxy, I mean Eastern and Oriental and including the Church of the East where I come from. We do not believe in something called purgatory. But um, it is something that is taught in, the, in our beloved Catholic Church. So if you are a Catholic and you follow uh, your church, then um, I guess respect your church and, and follow the teachings. But I can say one thing. I have to say this. There is nowhere in the entire Holy Bible clearly saying that you're going to go to a place where you will be prayed They'll get a pray for you, then you'll pay the debt and leave. There is nowhere with clarity in the entire Holy Bible. However, however, there is in the Holy Bible mention of praying for the dead. There is. And this, again, where it comes a little bit kind of controversial. You see, again, in the apostolic churches, Catholic, Orthodox, these are apostolic churches, we also accept the second canonical books, the deutero-canonical books, where it's not accepted in the Protestant branch. So in the second canonical books, there is a mention of praying for the dead. All right. So, um, but purgatory, there is no clear mention of it in the entire Holy Bible. We may take a question from here. Before I answer the question, is it hot in here or is it hot? Maybe, yeah. Okay. Okay. What is the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven? Is the kingdom of God referring to our soul? Uh, no. The difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is the following. Both of them are from heaven. The kingdom of heaven, the title itself is saying to me and all of us, this kingdom came from heaven. And the kingdom of God, and where is God? Our Father who art in heaven. 
So both of them are from heaven. However, kingdom of heaven came from heaven to earth and it was established on earth when Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, was crucified on Golgotha, on Calvary, on the cross. The Lord established the kingdom of heaven on earth the day he was crucified. So this kingdom came from heaven, but it is on earth. Reason being, the kingdom of heaven came, so through the Lord Jesus and his salvific plan to bring as many people as possible from the world, from the kingdom of the world, which is ruled by Satan. The kingdom of the world. So the Lord came and established the kingdom of heaven on earth and by grace and by his precious blood tries to bring as many people out of the kingdom of the world into the kingdom of heaven. Now, who are the kingdom of heaven? The Christian world. Christendom. Every baptized soul in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is the kingdom of heaven. Now, where is the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven? Well, when we read in the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25, the Lord is giving a parable about the ten virgins, five wise and five unwise. When we read in the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 13, when the Lord talks about the tares and the seed of wheat, in the kingdom of heaven, everyone is baptized. But is every baptized soul follows the Lord Jesus? No. There are true followers and there are Christian by name. So the kingdom of heaven has ten virgins, five wise, five unwise. In the kingdom of God, all of them are wise. The kingdom of God cannot afford to have unwise people there. The kingdom of God, all are the grain of wheat. There is no tares because the tear is planted by the enemy, Satan. The kingdom of God, all of them are saints. The kingdom of heaven, there are sinners. Yes? So the kingdom of heaven is on earth. Those who will make it to heaven they will enter the kingdom of God. Yes? I'll put it this way to you. Everyone went to school. But did everyone who went to school became a doctor? No. But every doctor went to school. Everyone went to school, but not everyone became a doctor. But every doctor went to school. Everyone who's going to end up in the kingdom of God is baptized. But not every baptized will end up in the kingdom of God. Because they chose not to follow the Lord even after receiving the holy baptism and receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The companion of St. Paul. He was, Jesus was his Lord and Savior and everything and then he... The current of the world took him away. He was not saved. So when somebody comes and says, once saved, always saved, it's not biblical. It's not. You can lose your salvation. Why? Because you still have the will. Why? Because you still have the love of God in you. God created you on the basis of love. And in love there is freedom. With freedom there is choices. With choices there is the will. You still choose to accept
So, kingdom of God, all saints. Kingdom of heaven, there is sinners. There is wise and unwise in the kingdom of heaven. But in the kingdom of God, there is only wise. Because God will not accept unwise people to enter his holy presence. You with me now? Yes? Is that clear? How come there's no response? <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. Well, I'm not going to hold you to it. You know, you can be free and say, yes, I, I understand, or no, I don't understand. You know what I mean. If I do any sin, God will forgive me. If you repent, yes. If you repent. If you don't repent, God will not forgive you. Because it's not God that is not forgiving you. It is you who are shutting the door. So when you commit a crime, you need to come back and say, I'm sorry, Lord. I've sinned against you in heaven. Like the prodigal son. See, the prodigal son in Luke 15, he went away. A far away country. He did everything against his father. But one day he came to his senses. He woke up after being crushed. You know, some people will not come to the Lord until the Lord breaks them very profoundly. Ah, oh, yeah. The Lord will corner you. If you don't give up, He's going to corner you until you raise the white flag and say, Surrender, Lord. So you've been doing drugs, and the Lord's been saying, Stop it. And you say, Oh, I'm enjoying it, mate. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? I'm enjoying it. I think it's hard, isn't it? No, not after the drugs. <laughs> Naturally, I'm hot. You know, just, just kidding, not. Um, so, yeah. You've been doing whatever wrong under the sun. The Lord has been calling you, calling you, calling you. You're not responding. The Lord, you've left him no choice but to come and corner you. He'll make sure that you're going to lose all those things that have been the reason for you being distant from him. So if it was friends, he'll take them away from you. If it's a job, he will take the job away from you. If it's health, he will take the health away from you. If it's parents, he will, no, he will push them aside. <laughs> Anything and anyone you put before the Lord, the Lord will take that thing and that one away from you because his love for you is zealous. It is a holy jealousy. It's a holy one. It's a holy jealousy. Don't forget the Lord is the heavenly groom and the church is his beloved bride and the, and the groom cannot share his bride with no one else. I'll ask you, my man, would you share your wife with someone else? No way in the world. No way in the world. The Lord will not share his wife, his bride with no one. So if that one is money, he will crush that money. If that one is a person, he will push that person. If that one is Satan, he has already stepped on Satan on Calvary. Whatever it is, he will take it away because he is a zealous, jealous God. Because with love, there is always jealousy associated with it. The day you are no longer jealous, you no longer love. The day you are not jealous of your partner, talking to someone else. Actually, I just remembered this joke. <laughs> this husband calls his wife from work. He said, honey. I just fell at work and I broke my leg and Stephanie took me to the hospital. She said, who is Stephanie? <laughs> Did you get it? She didn't say, oh, how are you? How is the leg? Have, have, have they put that iron rod in it? No, no, no. Who is Stephanie? I don't care about the leg. I care about Stephanie. <laughs> Jealousy kicks in. When there is genuine love. When there is genuine love. So, the Lord is love. He's jealous, but a pure, a holy one. So you walk away from him? No. He'll crush everything and everyone.
to bring you back you are the bride yes and we're living in honeymoon baby my daughter you may say you love your parents your mom your dad whoever that person is that is the closest ever to your heart when you get married would you take your mom to honeymoon with you oh, mom i'll get you a room next door so you can make me scramble eggs in the morning anyone tries to come with you on honeymoon you, you just chop them <laughs> because that moment is that intimate moment between the man and the woman no one comes in between no one yeah this is the Lord this is the Lord he wants you for himself he wants you for himself and he made a promise to his heavenly father daddy that I will not go back empty-handed I will bring the bride with me you see you gave me the bride and I will bring the bride to you dad I'll bring her into your house into your home I made a promise and when I make a promise daddy I they never ever back off so whatever it takes I'll bring the bride even if I crush her and I break her and I smash her I'll do it but I will bring the bride to the father's house and the Lord is good don't let him crush you trust me it can be very 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 painful process it can be a very painful process oops this just came off from my red belt in karate <laughs> Is Jesus two natures, divine and human, uni unified or, or separated? No, my dear, it's unified, united. The divine and the human united in the person of Christ from the moment of conception in the womb of the Holy Mother, the Virgin of all virgins, and until the cross, burial, resurrection, and forever and ever and ever and ever, 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 more, 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 more. Humanity and, and divinity united in one person called Christ. Never separated. Never. And if anybody says they were separated, then that is not a biblical teaching. Not. God knows our thoughts and what's in our hearts. Does Satan also know our thoughts, i.e., can he... Um, can he read our minds and does he know what is in our hearts? To a certain degree, yes, but not everything. The only one who knows everything is God. Satan compared to the Lord Jesus he is extremely limited he can read certain thoughts he can read certain waves only when the Lord permits him and also when we also permit Satan yes so but the Lord has put a limit a boundary to Satan he does not know all things he does not know everything that's why he's extremely finite he's very limited and this is why the Lord can really play with Satan and he won't even know what hit him however Satan's knowledge compared to ours is very very huge we don't know much he knows a lot compared to us but compared to the Lord he knows nothing really he's very weak So yeah, Satan doesn't know every thought. And this is why you need to be strong, trusting the Lord that you are in good, capable hands, the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't ever fear. Don't ever fear nothing.
Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is for me. Uh, and I need you to pray for this person. Um, I need you to pray for this person. Um, as humans, we're sinners. What's this all about sin, eh? Uh, as, you, as humans, we're sinners and can't stop sinning. I was taught in school if I did in a, if I die in a state of mortal sin, I'll go to hell. If that's the case, we will all go to hell. <laughs> so how do I make it to heaven? I ask for forgiveness every day, but I still sin daily. Okay. Well, You've been taught in school, if you, if you die in a state of mortal sin, you'll go to hell. Well, to somewhat degree, that is correct. If it's a mortal sin and you die doing that, definitely very hard to make it to heaven. <laughs> You're going to go to hell. But this is why the Lord Jesus came. Because the Lord knew everyone was going to hell. From the first Adam to the last human being that comes to the face of this planet. Every human being would have ended up in hell if it wasn't for the Lord Jesus. The Lord came, He paid the price on our behalf. He took our sins upon Himself, nailed it on the cross, and died on our behalf. He paid the price and said, whoever accepts the Lord by the grace of God, by the mercy of the Lord, by the precious blood which he shed on Calvary on the cross, you will be saved if you ask for forgiveness. You just told me here that you ask for forgiveness every day and you sin every day. Well, let me put it this way, and I pray this is going to help you to boost your morales and give you a bit of a hope that you are not condemned to hell. If you have the Lord Jesus, you have the grace of God of salvation and redemption. Well, I'll put it this way. The day that comes, any one of us that does not sin, we become like God. The only one who does not sin is God. Humans, as long as they live in the flesh, they are susceptible to making mistakes. And if you are trying your hardest, my beloved, not to sin, then you are approaching it wrongly altogether. You're wasting your time, your energy, your breath on achieving something that is unachievable by you. You cannot stop sinning. Because if you don't sin at all, you're like God. That day will never come. So what did the Lord Jesus do? Knowing beforehand that the human race is incapable of not sinning he came and he said accept me as your lord and savior and every time you show you fall short i will complete what is lacking you see my father says you need to enter my exam god says you need to enter my exam and in order to make it to my heaven you need to get a hundred out of a hundred no one can do it. So I entered the exam and the best I could have achieved was 10 out of 100. If you ask the Lord's help, he'll come and add the other 90 on top of your 10 and he'll say to his dad, Daddy, your child got 100 out of 100. That's called grace. That's called mercy. But there's one thing, my dear. If you're asking for forgiveness every day and you are sinning deliberately every day, you're asking for forgiveness, the Lord will not hear. If you come in here and say, Lord, forgive me, and you are going out knowing 
knowing for sure you're going out to do something wrong deliberately, the Lord cannot help you. But if you are sinning indirectly, you haven't planned for it, you haven't plotted for it, and you went out hoping that you'll be fine, and something comes out of nowhere and makes you fall, you go back and ask for forgiveness, the Lord will forgive you. But if you go out deliberately doing something wrong, knowing that this is wrong in the sight of God, yet knowing this and you're still doing it, how can the Lord forgive you? Impossible. You need to ask for repentance from the heart and you need to mean it. And you need to do your best by the grace of God not to make a mistake. But if the mistake comes with no intention behind it, prior intention, then the Lord will forgive you when you come back and say, sorry, Lord. But if you're doing it deliberately, then what are you asking for? You're just, we are just deceiving ourselves. Like I'm coming to the Lord, Lord, I'm really sorry, I'm a sinner, but my friends are waiting for me. I have to go, Lord, thank you so much. Doesn't work. So when you go out, your friends call you, don't go. So you don't go with your friends that teach you to do the wrong things. You didn't go, that's good. So you went another direction, something happened and you lost it. That that was not intentional. Come back and say, Lord, I'm sorry. He will forgive you. Amen. But by doing it deliberate, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, my dear friend. How do you let go of someone you love truly but doesn't have your heart? What does that mean? You guys can understand this language? Huh? Doesn't love you. Ah, oh, doesn't. Ah, oh, sorry, Laya. It's the glasses. How do you let go of someone you love truly but doesn't love you? I think you need to make an appointment. <laughs> and this appointment will have to be outside the church premises. <laughs> um, a nice dinner will do me fine, you know, somewhere uh, very nice, somewhere uh, maybe McDonald's. <laughs> Just kidding. How do you let go of someone that you love but they don't love you? It is the most painful thing is a one-way street love. The most painful. Well, they, they love, you love them but they don't love you. I'll bring you another one from the Middle East, don't worry. Ah, <laughs> uh, what do we do with this love? It's so painful. Hmm? As they say, love is blind. Yeah? So, let me tell you this, my dear friend. Looks like you are not married to this person. I hope you're not. <laughs> I hope. I have seen so many young men and women dying to marry this person. So a guy comes, he is shredded to pieces. The other day, someone came crying, a boy, a young man, young man, crying, wants to get married and it's not working. There is a lot of obstacles in the way. And he broke my heart. Honestly, he broke my heart. He put tears in my eyes. I prayed for him, for the Lord to do something about it. But you know what? It's funny, we try to do everything possible and impossible just to get this person and marry this person. 
We married that person. After one year, five, ten years, I cannot stand the very person whom I was dying just to get married to. That's a secret. So let me tell you, my dear friend, about marriage, even though it's a very deep topic. We'll have to do a session specifically about marriage. Let me tell you one thing. Prior to marriage, everything is beautiful, everything is funny, everything is colorful. After marriage, all hell breaks loose. You see, prior to marriage, let's say you are at the very early, I call the Rosella stage, getting to know each other, the Rosella stage. Choo, 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 choo. It's all lovey-dovey talk. Hello, honey. Hello, Habibi. I love you. I, I, I die for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's all love talk. Let's say you're sitting with your, with your fiance. And your fiance, the man, you're sitting with a group of people and he says a joke. And you laugh. The others didn't laugh. But you laughed, why? Because my sweetheart said it. It's his joke. I love him. Everything is so cool coming from him. It's funny. So you laugh, my dear daughter. After marriage, he says the same joke. You nail him on the wall. <laughs> so let me tell you this. If this Juliet does not happen to be your partner in crime, uh, in marriage, then there is another Juliet. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. But I'll tell you, you cannot stand a relationship that is one way. It's impossible. You see, love, true love that comes from the heart, genuine love, can only exist when it's a two-way street, not a one-way street. When it's one way, it's a selfish love. And it's a painful love. So my advice to you, how can you let go? Uh, I know, I know the feeling, brother. Oh, my daughter. How can you let go? Pray, ask the Lord to help you let go. Pray, ask the Lord to help you let go. Because the more you stay in this kind of an environment, you will never progress, you'll start going backwards. You will hurt yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you will destroy yourself. Because love is extremely powerful. Love is the supreme ethic. It's the foundation to everything. God is love. So the ultimate is love. And that's why love is so beautiful, but at the same time is so painful. So if it's a one-way street, and you are certain of this, then walk away. Even if you get broken badly, you'd rather get broken now for a short time and not be broken for the rest of your life after marriage. Because if you're not married and you walk away, it's a lot easier than being married and walking away. And especially when there are children involved. Because now you are not just responsible for yourself, you're responsible for the entire family, including the kids, who will definitely suffer the most. Suffer the most. So, if you're not married, thank God. <laughs> Say hallelujah, I'm not married. <laughs> Just walk away, I'll get you another uh, Elizabeth or whatever you want. We'll make a phone call, don't worry. But, if you are that deeply attached, then I would recommend this if you haven't done it yet. Put your name and the person you love so much on a piece of paper and give it to the priest. Go to the church and give it to the priest and ask the priest to put it on the altar and pray for this intention. What 
is the will of the Lord Jesus for me and this person? Pray. Put it on the altar and see what the Lord is going to do. If it's meant to be, you'll see the person changing and coming back to you. If it's not meant to be, it will get worse and they will walk away from you. So that's a sign from the Lord. Then if it is, then walk away. That's it. Very simple. What do you do? You can handle it. Don't worry. The Lord will heal you. This is why for those who are still very young and they haven't entered such a relationship, please, my sons and daughters, young teenagers, boys and girls, my beloved sons and daughters, don't ever think it is fun not to have, I've got a boyfriend. I've got a girlfriend and they're boasting about it. That's not fun. But I look odd. Everybody's got a partner except me. I need to have one. Excuse me? What are you buying some sort of a, a product? This is not a joke. A relationship as such can have enormous impact on your life if it is not healthy. Enormous. People have, have dived into extremely deep depression. It's not a joke. But you're still very young. So it's fun. We went out, we ate, we drank, we chat, and we laughed, and we did. It's not fun. I remember this girl came running to me one day, 16 years of age. Beautiful young girl, 16 years of age. Came running, father further crying her eyes out what's wrong daughter my boyfriend just left me how long have you been together four years father i'm not good at mathematics 16 minus 1 15 minus another one 14 minus another one 13 minus another one 12. so you've known this boy at the age of 12 he was drinking milk in a dummy. Of course he'll leave you because he's another kid. Let me tell you this psychological fact. A person changes their mind like the weather every single day when, until they reach the age of 18. That's the first stop. Before the, before the age of 18, there's no breaks. The motor is running, the car is running. There is no brakes. One day they will wake up and say, I want a bicycle. The other one is, I want a motorcycle. I want a car. I want this. I want Versace. I want Louis Vuitton. I don't know what else. I want Chanel. I want this. I want holidays. And the ultimate. What do you want? I don't know. I don't know. This is the teenage life. Every day they are in a different mood swing. When they hit 18, slows down a bit but there are still changes you know when you really slow down when you hit 50. <laughs> or when you feel like you're 50 even though you're not 50. <laughs> so my beloveds be careful be careful be careful entering a relationship as such between boy and a girl at a very early age because you will hurt yourself it's not a it's not a joke it's not fun Does the Holy Spirit proceed from the Son? Uh, yeah, uh, it, in the Nicene Creed, if you're referring to the Nicene Creed, uh, the, original, the original text proceeds from the Father, not the Son. Yeah? Because the word proceed is not like exit. Exit, to exit a place, that means you leave that place totally and completely. Proceeding from a place, you leave the place, but you are still in it. You haven't left it. You just came out of it, but you're still there. So if the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son, then there is two gods. But if the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father only, which is the original text of the Nicene Creed. The original text of the Nicene Creed in a nutshell, my dear. Why is there different accounts of Jesus uh, rising from the dead, from the tomb? 
different accounts. Hmm? Different accounts, what do you, I don't know, what do you mean exactly by different accounts? Do you mean like it's written differently in the Gospels? Like you read one Gospel says one thing, and the other one says another thing, and the other one says another thing? We'll do a topic just on that. Yeah, it's, it's okay, it's perfect. If that's what you mean. If that's what you mean, then we'll do a lecture on that, and we'll explain why when you read in, the, in Matthew and the other ones, everyone is telling you a different story. It's not a different story. It's the, it's the perfect, complete story of the account of the resurrection of the Messiah. So it's a perfect picture when you put them together. Oh, my goodness. Let me see. No, I think I'll leave this for later. Oh. How do you help your child who has experienced childhood trauma, who comes in and out of their faith? How do you help the parents who have so much hate for the perpetrator? Why do people harm children? Uh, it's a million dollar question. Why do people harm children? It's very sad and very sick. There are two kind of people I cannot see crying. It breaks me to smithereens. An old aged person and a little child. Because both of them are helpless. They are in need of someone else's help. Someone is an elderly and gets abused. If I see the abuser, I'll bury them with my hands. And if I see someone abusing a little child, I will put him through a shredder. My blood boils up. May the Lord have mercy on me, but my blood boils up when somebody abuses an elderly and a child. These two are untouchable areas. You cannot, period, you cannot. So they abuse children and there is a scar for the rest of their life. And obviously the parents, when they see the person who was the reason for their child's current situation, how are they going to forgive that person? It's very hard. It's very hard. We need to pray for the child and the parents, my dear friend. Pray and ask the Lord Jesus to touch their hearts because only God can really comfort their troubled heart and give them the strength to forgive the one who has hurt them and their child the most. Takes God. So ask the Lord for healing for the child and the parents. And if you'd like to give us their names privately, confidential, I'll be more than happy to see you. Or you can come and see me afterwards and give me their names and we will pray for them, you know, without anyone knowing except the Lord Jesus. <laughs> this question is for me. <laughs> I know this is a personal question, but would you be able to talk about your um, relationship with your earthly mother and her experiences with Christ? Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I can. I still miss her. It was a long time we lived together. She was a wonderful lady. And, a, and an, an awesome mother. She was an uh, absolutely uh, um, devout Christian and very faithful and loyal to her family, uh, to her husband um, also who has departed as well. This so happens to be my earthly father. Um, and uh, she taught us and uh, raised us in the love of Christ 
I remember, oh, this I will say, when I was a little kid, um, we are five siblings. I'm the youngest, but I look the oldest. So I'm the youngest. Um, uh, we're five brothers, no sisters. Uh, so when uh, every Saturday evening, my sweetheart, my, holy mo uh, my, my earthly mother, she would come and gather us all, and uh, she would grab her holy Bible, which she brought with her from Iraq to Australia. She left everything behind except her holy Bible, the cross, and an icon of the Lord Jesus, a very small one. She adored the Holy Mother to death. And she raised us in the love of the Lord Jesus and His Holy Mom. So every Saturday evening, she would gather all her children. And I happened to be the youngest one of all. And she would bring her Holy Bible. And the Holy Bible, I still have it at, at home with me. It is in Armenian. It is the Armenian language because my mother was fluent in Armenian reading writing you would never tell this is an assyrian person when she spoke armenian she would blow my mind away even armenians when they hear, hear her they think she's an armenian and then to their shocking surprise knowing he is an assyrian descent they said impossible for you to know this much armenian this fluent in armenian amazing so her bible was in armenian so she would open the holy bible every saturday evening without fail Yet she had a lot of work responsibilities on her shoulders. And she would read and then translate that into Assyrian and then explain as much as she could, as much as she knew, and always said, Jesus is the only one. Jesus is the only way. Let me tell you, share with you. It's okay. It looks like the Lord wants me to share something. Now, my earthly mother adored my heavenly mother, Mother Mary. In our house in Baghdad, it was a double-story house. There was a room upstairs. She dedicated the entire room to be that prayer room. She had the Holy Cross, the Lord Jesus, the Holy Mother, and all the saints, and the Holy Bible. That room was a room of prayer, of contemplation. Every time she was in trouble, Every time she needed help, she would run upstairs and she would spend an hour or two there praying, lighting a candle and begging the Lord and his mom. Now, let me tell you this. This is a true story, my beloved, to those who have ears to hear as the Lord says. We had this neighbor for years. I'm talking about maybe 30 years as a neighbor. Their son was involved in a car accident. He was one of the passengers. The driver was speeding so fast, he drove into a tree, and it happened to be the side where this woman's son was sitting. He, wa he went into coma. He had a brain injury, and he was in coma for months. The doctors, after a few months, came to the mother and said, your son is dead even if he were to recover miraculously he would have we would not know the the impact that happened on his brain he would probably be a vegetable for the rest of his life but he will definitely have a scar and that scar could be very very big it is best for your son to go and not to come back because what a life is he going to have but your son now clinically speaking is dead she came crying to my earthly mother she's a mother and we know what the heart of the mother is when it comes to her children so she came crying to my earthly mother begging her this happened in front of my eyes yeah i was an eyewitness she said i'm a sinner you're a saint the Holy Mother hears your prayers. She doesn't hear my prayers. You go and beg the Holy Mother. I want her to give my son back to me. My mom, as always, she ran upstairs. And she went and knelt before the icon of the Holy Mother. She lit a candle. 
and she prayed I don't know how long that night the same night the Holy Mother came to my earthly mother's dream and she said she mentioned the name of that woman to prove to my mom this is not a dream it's real I am the real mother she said my mom was saying she had in her hand a head a human head she said take this head and give it to that son and she called him by his name and that name is his real name on earth his name was Edward she said take this head and give it and put it on Edward's head this is a new head I Mary I'm giving Edward a new head she wakes up she calls the one and only yours truly <laughs> I was the postman <laughs> Come here, son, run to the neighbor and tell the mother your son is fully recovered. 100% and you need to thank the Holy Mother for it. Let me tell you, let me tell you this. Within two days, Edward was sitting eating. Is anyone home? I am an eyewitness. My mom was, she had a very deep and genuine love for the Lord and the Holy Mother. Let me tell you one thing. If you think saints are dead and the Holy Mother is also gone, you are mistaken, my child. You have no idea how the other realm is. Oh, I can assure you, I put my entire, this life which the Lord has given me, I put this life on the line. I will never blink twice. The Holy Mother is so alive, you can never fathom. It's so alive and so awesome, so venerated so highly venerated so highly exalted so magnificent stunning amazing 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 mother amazing if it wasn't for the holy mother i wouldn't be standing now and talking to you i would be dead physically she saved me from the mouth of the lion of course by the grace and the power of her son of course this goes without saying my beloveds please Jesus Christ is the one and only but hang on the Lord has, has, a, has a mother and what a wonderful mother he has he adores his mom and he has given her great and magnificent blessings I'll say this knowing it not just believing it i saw it with my own eyes when the holy mother comes satan becomes a little mouse he can fight other saints but he cannot fight the holy mother he is that afraid of her why because the holy mother was so faithful was so loyal to god's plan and to her beloved son Jesus Christ of Nazareth her son adores her so when she goes the son is with her and when the son comes with her Satan is nothing but a little mouse oh I tell you what I ask Saints yes they come but when I ask my mom it's done on the spot So Edward lived and he got married, fully recovered, not a blemish. The doctors and top doctors were blown away. They said, only God can do this. And who gave the head? The Holy Mother. 
just to show us how much Jesus Christ of Nazareth adores his mom. He said, it's okay, mom. I'll get you to take the credit. Because <laughs> I love you. And you have tolerated so many things for my sake, mom. You have endured so many obstacles. You have carried so much burden on, on your shoulders for years and years and years. For my sake, do you think I'll forget this? I will never forget every tear you shed for my sake. I will never forget every hour you spend sitting and watching me, praying for me, taking me to the temple and bringing me back, washing me, clothing me, feeding me, dressing me, running from one town to the other, from one city to the other, from one country to the other, to protect me. I'll never forget that mother, all the sacrifice you made all these years. I'll give it to you in the next life. On earth you were a handmaiden, in heaven you will be the queen. You will be the queen. For he who humbles himself before the Lord shall be exalted. She humbled herself before the Lord. She is now exalted in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Go, Holy Mother. Stunning woman. Mighty saint. The mother of all saints. The mother. Amazing. Are you tired? Come on, come on, be honest. Um, I work all day every Sunday. Um, Sunday, isn't it supposed to be a holy and quiet day, I guess? But I go straight to church in the Sunday afternoon. Am I doing okay for God by working all day on Sunday? But you are going to church, yes? If you're going to church in the afternoon, then you are doing okay. Well, maybe you need to work on Sunday. I don't know what your situation is. Maybe um, the workplace or with, wherever you're working, they are uh, forcing you to work on Sunday. Maybe you have no other choice. If you have a choice, then maybe ask them to relieve you from working on Sunday. But if it's a must and you have to go to work and you rely on that job to provide, then it's okay. The Lord is merciful. But even though you're working and you're still making it to church in the afternoon, well, Thumbs up. Well done. The Lord is very happy. God bless you. Oh, now. There was this controversial topic that I asked the people before going live. Shall we talk about it? Majority put their hand up saying yes. A few people put their hand up said no. They say majority rules, eh? Majority rules. May the Lord have mercy. May the Lord have mercy on all of us. Even though this topic is already everywhere on social media platforms, so I'm not neither the first nor the last to talk about this, but I pray that I approach this in somewhat slightly different to the way it has been approached maybe so far. And that is what was approved by the Vatican and signed off by Pope Francis in recent times about concerning the LGBT. <sighs> Providing a blessing for those who are in this kind of a lifestyle. 
Um, I won't dwell on it that much. But one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why we are talking about it now is we have seen in person young Christian Catholics coming to us saying, what shall we do? Do we leave the church or do we stay? I will never ever encourage anyone to leave their church. Never. Because it's not nice to take people from other flock who are already Christians and bring them to another flock that is Christian as well. What have we achieved? But we can only advise them and we always ask them to pray and stay calm, stay put, trust in the Lord because the Lord always comes and pulls it through and pulls it together. Has there been church leaders that were disobedient to the Lord Jesus in the past? Always. Is it something new? No. Remember, at the time of the Lord Jesus, the high priest Caiaphas, he said, crucify him. He cried out to the public and said, crucify this man. This man, we don't want him to be king over us. We want Caesar. Caesar, who was a vampire, sucking their blood, stepping on them, enslaving them. They preferred the one who enslaved the Israelites over the one who came to set them free once and for all. Amazing. And who encouraged people to be, to fume up and go and crucify the Lord Jesus? The high priest. And the high priest of the Old Testament of the old time is the Pope, the patriarch, or the church leader of the New Testament. Same thing. Same thing. I'm addressing Pope Francis directly. And may the Lord have mercy on me. But I'm addressing him with absolute love and humility. I'll ask Pope Francis as a small father on earth because we have one father in heaven and that is God. So, my beloved Pope Francis, I pray this message gets to you. I pray this message gets to you. I'm speaking with love and humility, and I don't wish to raise my head up. So I'm going to try to be looking downward. My dear Pope, you hold a very, a very, very influential position. Your success is my success, and please allow me to speak. Your success is my success. In the eyes of the world, you are a Catholic, and I am an Orthodox, but in the eyes of the Lord, we are His children. We are all Christians. These names may differ, but to the Lord Jesus, we are all one. There is no difference. So your success as a Catholic leader is my success as an Orthodox bishop. What makes you happy makes me happy. And what makes you sad makes me sad. Your failure is my failure. And please forgive me for using the word failure. Your failure is my failure. Your success is my success. And this is the reason and this is the way I am approaching this in addressing you, my beloved Pope Francis. But sometimes, not sometimes, but the truth hurts all the time. Or even sometimes. Ever since my beloved Pope, you have signed off on this and you are giving a blessing to same-sex people, not as in marriage, 
as in a sacramental way, but you are doing it as a blessing for these people who are choosing to live in this kind of a lifestyle. I'm really sorry, dear Pope, but you do not have the jurisdiction to do such an act. You do not have it. Even though you're a Pope, but this is way, way outside your jurisdiction because no one is above the Lord Jesus and His Holy Word. No one. If to Saint Peter, if to Saint Peter, the Lord rebuked and said, away with you, Satan, because Satan spoke through Saint Peter. He wasn't calling Peter Satan, but it was Satan who spoke through Peter and said to Jesus, far from you being crucified because the Lord said it is written about me I will be crucified and to a Jewish person crucifixion is a definite no zone out of limit so if Satan spoke through Simon Peter do you think Satan cannot speak through me or through you yes he can my beloved Pope I am begging you to withdraw this entire document and plug it from its roots because all it has done it has caused an absolute chaos an absolute disorientation an absolute division within our beloved the Catholic Church let alone Christendom as a whole because to the world, we are all Christians. The world, don't say, ah, oh, this guy is a Catholic, this guy is an Orthodox. No, we are all Christians. So they're going to say, look at the Christians, what they are doing. Now we can see within the Catholic Church, bishops going against the Pope and other bishops. Priests talking different things. One says it is okay. The other says, no, it is not okay. So there is already a division within our beloved Catholic Church. The church doesn't need any more divisions, chaos, because we have enough, enough in our plates, enough. We don't need any more. A blessing can only be given to someone who is willing to repent and come back not choose willingly to live in a state of a relationship that is offensive to God himself and when it comes to God there is no authority on earth that can override what God has not blessed no one you know one of the Old Testament prophets by the name of Balaam he was called by this pagan king and he said to this prophet he said come and condemn the Israelite nation curse them curse the Israelite nation he came and said to that pagan king what God has blessed I cannot curse and vice versa my dear Pope what God has not blessed neither you nor I nor anyone can bless because if God opens the door no one can shut and if God shuts the door no one can open and this was the problem of the great flood the time of our father Noah God closed the door of the ark and he flooded the whole globe people outside of the ark came running knocking at the door begging our father Noah please open the door our father Noah his heart was aching from within himself he cried out to them and he said I wish I wish I could open the door for all of you I wouldn't have hesitated not even a split second but the problem my beloveds I didn't close the door it was God was God so when God closes no one can open and when God opens the door no one can close 
And this is John the Beloved in the book of Revelation chapter 4. And he said, I heard this voice and I looked up and I saw a door open in heaven. That is the door of Christ. And when Christ opens the door, no one can shut John the Beloved. Let the whole world shut their doors in your face. But when Christ opens the door, no one ever can close the door. So my beloved Pope, God never blessed such a relationship. Therefore, it is outside of every church leader's jurisdiction to bless such a relationship. Outside. Whether you're a Pope, a Patriarch, a Cardinal, a Bishop, I don't care. So, we have, we have done something that is offensive in the eyes of God. And what have we achieved? Division within the church and the Christian world. I am begging you, Pope Francis, to withdraw the letter immediately. I am begging you. Because at the end of the day, all of us are accountable to give an answer before the Almighty God, who is the only true judge, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And my fear is, I don't want to stand before the Lord and be put to shame. I want to stand before the Lord with my head up and looking into his beautiful eyes and holy eyes. So we cause division within the church for something we cannot bless. When God, when God himself created the human being, he created Adam and out of Adam Eve, he called them male and female. And he said to the male and the female, unite and then have children, multiply, increase and fill the whole earth. God said, I, God, created this human race, male and female, and I blessed this union of marriage between a male and a female. The blessing can only be given to a union in a matrimonial union when there is a male and a female. God can never, ever go against himself and against his word. Therefore, God will never bless a marital union between same sex. Impossible. You know why God can never contradict himself? Because he is holy. Do you know what the word holy means? In the true definition of holiness, it's not someone that does miracles. It's not someone that preys on people and heal them and cast demons out of people. That is not holiness. Holiness is one simple definition. It is the person that is with good character, meaning however that person is before you, he is the same behind your back. Whatever is inside that person is outside of him. Whatever is in their heart is in, on their lips. They don't know how to twist things, falsify things, and have double standards. A holy person, whatever is inside of them is outside of them. We are not holy. Why? Because so many times we have one intention in our heart, but we say a totally different one out of our mouth. I want to chop their head. And when I see them, I say, oh, I love you. I miss you. What a liar. <laughs> but God is holy, meaning whatever he thinks, he says. And whatever he says, he does. He cannot change. It is in his nature, the never changing God. He cannot. 
So when he says one word, it is forever the same word, never changing. God chose freely, willingly, yet he is the ultimate sovereign authority over everything and everyone visible and invisible. He chose freely, willingly through his holiness to create this human race as male and female and give the blessings to such marital bond between a male and a female. Impossible to bless someone. I'm not talking about giving them a sacrament of marriage as you put it in that document. I'm talking about the word blessing. Because God, when he brought the two, he blessed them. That's why they increased and multiplied. Without the blessings of the Lord, there is no multiplication, there is no increase. So who did God bless? Male and female. On the other hand, you cannot bless someone that is willingly choosing to live a life God rejects. LGBT is not to do with sin only. If it were to do with sin only, then no one can ever talk and say anything because all of us are sinners. What is the difference between this sinner and that? Nothing. Both are sinners and in need of God's mercy. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is God's mercy. But LGBT is much greater and harsher than sin. It's got to do with it's a crime. It's a crime in the sight of God. It's not only sin. When it comes to sin, all of us are sinners. I can't judge. I'm another sinner, just like them. But it's a crime in the sight of God more than sin. Why? Because LGBT is the abolishment of human identity. The abolishment of the very human identity which God chose to give from the very beginning. God said, this is a male. And God said to the other, you are a female. This is human identity given by God to the man and the woman. You're a male and a female. This is your identity. The moment you come out of that identity, you are no longer in that human cycle or circle. Not. Because when you came to earth, you were a male. When you came to earth, you were a female. When this male comes and says, I don't want to be a male, I want to be a female, he changed that human identity which God gave. Therefore, you cannot be neither a male nor a female now since you abolished the very identity given to you by God. I hope we are listening. I'm not judging. I love the LGBT people. I love them. I'll always pray for them. But I will never, ever bless their lifestyle. Never, ever accept their lifestyle. Impossible. And I can only give you the blessings as a church leader when you come out of that lifestyle, confess your sins before the Almighty God and repent and come back. Then you can be blessed. But to choose to live in that life willingly, happily, as if it is normal, and you expect the church leader to bless you, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy on your beloved church.
I wish I had never seen the day our beloved Catholic Church taking such an action. I love the Catholic Church. I'm trying to be very reserved. Because I love the Catholic Church. That's why. The Catholic Church is my church. Don't talk about the Catholic Church. If the leadership is corrupt, the church is holy. The church is holy. So, I'm begging you, Pope Francis. This document needs to be withdrawn as if it never existed. Because, sorry to say this with humility, you don't have the jurisdiction to give such a blessing. You do not. You do not hold that key. You do not. Neither you nor me nor any other church leader. I'm not talking about Pope Francis. There is no church leader that can give such a blessing. Impossible. We are living in the end of times, my beloveds. You will see a lot of colors. The Lord pre-warned us. So don't panic. Don't be disheartened. Don't walk away from your faith. Don't walk away from your church. The church is built on the rock. But if the leader wishes not to be built on the rock, that's his problem, not the church. He will have to give an account to the rightful owner of the church, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And all of us. But we don't hold the key to give a blessing to such a lifestyle. We don't. God will not allow it. God never gave it, never will. Who am I to override God's word? Whoa. Now this has gone too far. So to my beloved Catholic, Christian Catholics, keep on praying. Love your church. Don't be discouraged or disheartened. Don't ever walk away from the Lord, from the faith. The Pope is here today, I'm not saying. May the Lord take from my life and add to the life of Pope Francis. And I mean it. May the Lord Give me the pains and relieve Pope Francis from all his pains. But sorry, my dear Pope, I love you, but the truth hurts. We need to withdraw that letter, that document, whatever you want to call it. Fetusia supplican. That's what I call it. Big titles, but unfortunately very empty. From within. We need to withdraw that letter, my dear Pope, because it caused a lot of discomfort within our, your beloved followers. It has caused a lot of division within the church. There are, there are bishops in Africa, in Europe, that are in total disagreement and will never accept such a document. And they came out in the public, in public, and said it loud and clear. But it's so sad to see so many other bishops and cardinals in agreement with the Pope. So sad. And priests. And their, and their sort of reason is, Ah, oh, well, it's just a blessing. It's not a sacrament of marriage. It's just a blessing. Well, if you're going to bless, so if this couple come to any Catholic priest and say, look, uh, the Vatican has accepted us to receive a blessing from you, and the Pope signed off on it. So we're coming today to be blessed by, the, by, the, by you, dear priest and uh, while we are being blessed uh, we uh, we did we done some floral arrangements 
And, oh, and on the way, we grabbed the cameraman and the video man. It's a blessing. And we decided to make it kind of colorful while we're getting blessed by you. What are you going to say? No? And if you're going to bless this kind of a lifestyle, how about if somebody comes to you, dear Pope, and says, I live with three women and they need blessings. Because one woman, she's got a great brain. The other one's got great hands. The other one's got um, great skills to cook for me. So the three, combination, the three put together is a great combination. I live like a king. Can you bless them for me? What's the difference? You see, we're opening a door. We won't be able to close. Once you say yes to this, you cannot say no to the rest. <laughs> I'm trying to be reserved. <sighs> May the Lord have mercy. A time is coming, the Vatican City will no longer be in existence. You can take this as a prophecy. You can take this whatever you want to take. I'm saying it with, with very, with a great sadness in my heart. You want to believe me or not? It's yours. But let me tell you this. The Lord is on His way back to clean His house. Now, the Lord does not care you're a Catholic, you're an Orthodox, you're whatever. He, he doesn't even look at that. He doesn't even acknowledge that. The Lord wants your heart. He wants people that will love Him for Himself, not for what He does for you and what He gives you. He wants you to live Him for being Jesus. Because this alone more than suffices to be more than enough for you to embrace just for being Jesus the Lord is on his way back already he will cleanse his holy church from everyone who is trying to do things their way not God's way but The Vatican City will not exist anymore in the future. And this is from the Lord to those who think they are God on earth. There has been too much infiltration in the Vatican City. I want to be reserved. But let me tell you one thing, my beloved Catholic, Christian Catholics. The church has given birth to great saints throughout her history. The church has had great and beautiful leaders throughout her history. Yes, there has been times where it was the dark ages. But there has also been some wonderful popes that came along because the Lord will never be without a witness, no matter what time, what place it is. He will always have a witness for himself. When St. Peter's Basilica, and I'll finish it off on this, when St. Peter's Basilica was finished being built, the opening ceremony, there was millions of people that came flooding to watch this historical moment. Inside the basilica, there was the Pope and many cardinals. The basilica, I don't know if you've seen it, precious stones, silver, gold, everywhere. Extremely rich, extremely precious, extremely expensive building. One of the cardinals got up and being so proud of himself. I should put the left hand actually. He got up, not you people. 
being so proud of himself and he said pope please let me say this he said go ahead he said pope with absolute confidence i can say today the day is gone where i can say i have no gold nor silver to give you now who was he trying to go against saint peter himself he said today i can say with confidence the day is gone where i can say i have no more gold nor silver because saint peter along with saint john the beloved when they went up to the temple to pray they came through the beautiful gate to enter there was a paralyzed man placed at the gate the beautiful gate they walked in but saint peter came back and he said to that paralyzed man silver and gold i have not but one thing i have and i give you right now in the name of jesus christ of nazareth get up and walk gets up on the spot so this cardinal challenges saint peter pope today look at this magnificent building look at this structure look at the precious stones the gold and the silver the day is gone where i say that i have no gold nor silver to give you but the lord jesus has always witnesses for himself no matter what another cardinal gets up from the other side and he says pope please allow me to address my dear friend he said go ahead he said my dear friend and also i'll say this to you with utmost sadness engulfing my heart i can also say to you the day is gone to say in the name of jesus christ of nazareth get up and walk that day is also gone the moment we became rich with materialism christ we lost the church became weak satan engulfed the church and look what satan is doing to the church we need to come back to the one and only the crown of glory the crown of our heads jesus christ of nazareth he is neither catholic nor orthodox nor anything else he is simply god revealed in the flesh stop this nonsense we need to come back to the day and say in the name of jesus christ get up and walk what is gold and silver going to do for me? It is the blood of the Lamb of God that can only save me. The blood. So I'm begging Pope Francis to withdraw the letter as if it never existed. And whatever happens after that, please call me. Let's let us both be shredded in St. Peter's Square. I'll come and die with you because I know all hell will break loose because there are so many people under the radar. They don't want this to happen. Secret societies, Freemason, Jesuits. So, we draw the letter and let us both die. I'll die with you. I'll die with you, Pope. Because I love you. I love you. But please withdraw the letter. And before you withdraw it, just get, get a message to me. Say, come, because there are people who want to kill you in the Vatican. Whatever you do, don't lose the Lord. Lose everything, lose everyone, but don't lose the Lord. We cannot afford to lose the Lord. We cannot. Nothing replaces the Lord. No one replaces the Lord. He's my everything. He's the love of my life. I may be upset with him. I may be angry at him, 
but he knows I adore him. I may walk away from him, but he knows I love him. Whatever it is, the Lord is the only one. There is no other one but him. Hold on to Jesus Christ. Then whichever church you're in, just hold on to the Lord Jesus and pray for the Lord to touch the hearts of the leaders. There should have been more cardinals and more bishops opposing this within the Catholic Church. But no church leader has the authority to give such a blessing, period. No one. We cannot go above Christ. He is the head. We are the body. Amen. Amen. So we are praying for our beloved Pope Francis. We are praying for our beloved the Catholic Church and all the faithful, the genuine faithful in the Catholic Church. We are praying for all of them. We are all in it together. Your success is my success and your failure is my failure. We are in it together. We are in the same boat. And if the boat is sinking, don't argue who is the captain and who is not. The water does not differentiate. It will swallow everyone on that board. But let us put our hands together and salvage what is left and stop the boat from going down. We need Christ to stay above water. Amen. 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 I pray my beloved Pope Francis will hear this message and I'll pray, I'll pray that he will pray for this intention and I pray the Lord encourages him, gives him the strength to withdraw this letter immediately. All right. Well, it's been four weeks I haven't spoken to you, so please don't, don't uh, stone me to death. It's almost two hours you guys have been here. Woohoo! I love it. I wish I could keep you as long as I can. You know, can I say this? Yes, okay, thank you. <laughs> I don't like it, you know, when, when the church service is done so quickly, like a drive through I don't like that. Okay, why are you in a rush? What are you trying to leave the church for what? Oh, you want to go out? Well, let me tell you one thing, my dear friend. Outside is the flood. Outside is Satan waiting. Hello. <laughs> Come on down, baby. I got you now because you went to church in a rush. You were running, running, running. You were in a rush. You want the Holy Mass service to be 15 minutes. Come on, Father. Don't, don't give a sermon for two hours. Hurry up. I don't have the time to sit two hours. That is a life sentence for me. Two hours in the church. Well, you broke the record. Two hours you've been in the church. <laughs> Look, if you want to come to this good looking bishop, don't expect to leave less than two hours. And if you come to the Aramaic Holy Mass service, don't expect to leave less than three hours. We do here everything old fashioned, baby. I don't like drive throughs I leave that to McDonald's. I don't like drive through service because when you come here, here is the love of your life. And when you're sitting with the love of your life, the last thing you look at is the time because you don't want the time to take you away from you, sweetheart. My dear man, when you're sitting with your woman, do you look at the watch every five minutes? No. She's my sweetheart. I don't want the time to take me away from her. This is the way you treat the Lord. You come here, expect not to leave. <laughs> All right, Bishop. God bless you. Can we listen to another hymn? And I, 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 
will always love you. <clears throat> that was C minor uh, soprano. I taught Whitney Houston. Absolutely. Um, just very quickly, just again a reminder, please be aware of these false social media accounts opened under the bishop's name. I never have a personal account, never had, never will. I do not have a personal account under my name. Bishop Mari, Marmari, Mari Mari, I don't know, dot com, dot au, dot I don't know, what, whatever you see. Ma Mary Emmanuel, Bishop Mary, I don't have it. These are fake. And these fake accounts are really getting on my nerves now. So I'm telling these little kids out there, stop playing with fire because I will make a special phone call to the Lord Jesus to reprimand you one by one. I don't care about Facebook blocking you. I can block you. So you want me to block you as you, not your Facebook account or Instagram or whatever or TikTok. I can block you. Do you want? So be a good boy and a good girl and give up on these fake accounts. You're stealing people's money. I'll smack you my way. If you need money genuinely, send us a message. We will help you. By the grace of the Lord. Don't steal. We'll give you money. But don't steal. And if you don't believe in God, I'll prove it to you that God exists. So I'll give it one week. And then after the week, I'll make a phone call. The Lord will break them one by one. I don't like it. This person sent 5,000 US dollars to one of these fake accounts. 5,000 US. Well, if you live in Africa and you're in need of money, just send a message. Say, look, I genuinely am in need. Don't steal. Why are you stealing? Why are you stealing? Don't steal. Mm. I come from Avrigaman, <laughs> Shaka Zulu. <laughs> All right, so please, if you see any personal accounts, they're not mine. I, I don't have one. They're all fake. Um, we have uh, this year new classes of teaching Aramaic, and it's not only open to the Assyrian speaking people, but the non-Assyrian speaking people as well. So if you are Lebanese, Italian, uh, Vietnamese, Chinese, and you want to learn Aramaic, come on board. I do for you. <laughs> so come on board and learn the Aramaic language. It's opened. It will commence on every Thursday. It's once a week every Thursday at 7 p.m. here at the church premises. Um, so it'll be on a Thursday, uh, once a week, every Thursday at 7 p.m. And the class will commence on the 15th of Feb next month. 15th of Feb next month it will commence. So if you're interested in learning Aramaic from scratch, please put your name down with the youth group committee. And uh, the teacher will be calling you and um, we'll take it from there. So come and learn, even if you pronounce it not that sort of accurately, but still you will learn. You know when I watch the Passion of the Christ, sorry, I, I want to make it two hours. <laughs> you know when I watch the Passion of the Christ, uh, Mel Gibson, God bless this, yeah, this man, and Jim Caviezel for doing such wonderful jobs with the Sound of Freedom and the, and the uh, great, magnificent uh, Passion of the Christ. Well done, Mel. Good eye, mate. He going, brother. So, um, I got excited, yeah. He's an Aussie. Yeah, 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 baby. <laughs> um, yeah. What did I say? Yes, I watched the um, Passion of the Christ. I went to the cinema with a popcorn. 
and I'm listening, listening to those actors speaking in Aramaic. I couldn't make some of the words because their pronunciation was not the best because they are Europeans. They're not Aramaic speaking people. So I was looking at the subtitles. Oh, now I get it. So Mel, please. I love you, bro. You want to do another movie? Please call me. You know, I'll come and give you a hand and, and teach your crew how to pronounce it thoroughly and properly. Atu Malkat Yudaye. Shalom. Shlama Amchon. You gotta say it with a ch. Because, like Aramaic Hebrew, there's a lot of ch in it. So if, we, if you don't have that in your alphabet, <laughs> how are you going to pronounce it? <laughs> so we need to teach you how to say, <laughs> not. <laughs> so come and learn the Aramaic language. Now, on a serious note, this is the Lord's language. This is the Lord's language, and it's a blessing in its own. For the Lord had spoken this language. Come and learn. So please put your name down if you're interested. Um, come and try it. If you see that it's too much, it's too hard, you can always walk away. But I'll be waiting outside for you. Don't worry. <laughs> Red belt in karate, no problem. All right, let's stand for the finale prayer, please. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you and protect you all the days of your life, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless. Go in peace. The peace of Christ be with you always.